right, so let's go over the uh, quiz corrections for Math 5, quiz number 11. This was on 6.2. It's essentially synthetic division, long division, and a little bit of the factor theorem. This was taken March 29, 2019. <coughs> so you're asked to do a Ken Ken. Fill in the blank square so that each row and column contain all the digits 1 to, should have been 4. Numbers in the cages may repeat as long as they are not in the same uh, row or column. So <clears throat> we're only using the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. And here you have division. So in this uh, cage right here, you know it's a cage because it's darkened. It's okay if you have a line. You have to put two numbers here um, that will divide to be uh, 2. So your only numbers are 4 and 2 and 2 and 1, right? Um, but over here, I recognize that this one says times 4 because you can't put 2 and 2. So the only choices are 1 and 4. Well, I can't have 4s uh, in the same row, so I put 1 and 4, then 4 and 2. Then you're missing a number like 3. Then you can do something like 5 minus 3 um, gives you 2 because 2 plus 3 gives you 5. And then this is how you check your answer if you did it correctly. <coughs> you should be doing those in pencil. You just go through each column, has the numbers 1 to 4, 1 to 4, no repeating numbers, 1 to 4, no repeating. Numbers 1 to 4, no repeating, numbers 1 to 4. And then you can check each of the cages. 1 plus 4 is 5, uh, 4 minus 3 is 1, uh, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. Question number uh, 2. Given x plus 5, so I try to make it really bold, write the 0 that corresponds to each factor. Well, what's the factor? The factor is this, x plus 5. If it helps you, you can put it around parentheses, and you set it equal to 0. Write that down. Set it equal to 0. So if you subtract 5 from both sides, your answer is x equals negative 5. So to receive the two points on this problem, you had to either write x equals negative 5, or if you wrote negative 5, that would have been acceptable as well. So that question was 2 or 0. Question number 3 is just going opposite. Given, you should say, given x equals 2, write the factor that corresponds to each 0. So this is a zero, and again, if you needed a visual, you could have done something like this. On the x-axis, this is two. Well, if this is two, that means on the y-axis, it's a zero. This is a visual of that, right? So if I subtract two from both sides, I get x minus two equals zero. So if you wrote within parentheses x minus two, or no parentheses x minus two, then you would have gotten full credit. Two points or zero. Question number four. Free response, make sure to show all your work and box your answers. I took this question directly from your packet. Given f of x equals x to the fourth minus one and g of x equals x minus one, calculate f of x divided by g of x. Class, does it tell us which method to use? No, so you could have used long division or synthetic division. <clears throat> now, what's most essential in this problem is that you use the placeholders. So you got partial credit, meaning you didn't get this problem right, if you had something correct, um, something right in the quotient, or the placeholders. Why do you need a placeholder? x to the fourth, you can think of it as 1x to the fourth, 0x to the third plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 1. So these zeros here you have to add. When do you add them? When they're missing. You just kind of go descending or down the order. x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, x to the zero. Remember you're thinking about how many times x goes into x to the fourth. Remember, if you have to do a side problem, then do it. x to the fourth is 4x's, and then divided by x. And you're just thinking about, well, if I cross these off, they cancel equals 1, you're left with x cubed. So that's why I put an x cubed here. 
Here I'm going to multiply x cubed times x is x to the fourth. And don't forget x cubed times 1 is negative 1 x cubed. I used parentheses here. Don't forget you are subtracting. So I have 1 minus, there is a, a 1 here if there's no number. That would give me a 0, so I don't have to write 0. 0 minus negative 1. So I noticed throughout that if students weren't getting correct, they're struggling with the integers. That just basically means positive and negatives. And don't have any shame using your calculator. Some of you guys really generally struggled with it. 0 minus, 0, minus signs over here, minus negative 1. And press enter. It's a positive 1 is your answer. Bring it down. How many times is x going to x cubed? Your answer is x squared. I put x squared times x gives me x cubed. x squared times negative 1 gives me negative 1 x squared. And then you just subtract. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus negative 1 is the opposite of negative, which is a positive 1. Bring this one down, same thing. x goes into x squared, 1x squared. Uh, x times, x times x gives me x squared. Remember, you know you're doing it right when these subtract to equal 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus negative 1 is 1. Bring it down. x goes into x one time. 1 times x is x. And x times negative 1 is negative 1. And then you subtract. 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 1 minus negative 1 is also 0. So the answer to this problem is the quotient which I will box here. Notice how this problem doesn't tell us to write the product or anything like that. If you chose to do this problem in synthetic division because it doesn't tell us which method you're writing the coefficients. 1, 0, 0, 0, and negative 1. Remember, to go from x minus 1 to this one, you're setting it equal to 0. And that's why x equals 1 over here. Bring it down, multiply, then you add. A lot of students who got synthetic division incorrectly, I circled it and told, reminding you you're adding. 0 plus 1 is 1. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. And so this refers to, I would start over here. This is your remainder. This is your constant, so that's your 1. Then you add an x to it, so 1x. 1x squared, and you just keep moving up, 1x cubed. That side was worth 14 points. All right, on the back side, you were asked to do something similar. I just want to read it out loud. Again, these are just questions directly from your packets. The question is, can you listen, and can you actually show us you understand it? Determine each quotient using polynomial what? Synthetic division. A lot of you guys did a good job by marking the text by like underlining that so you knew. Write the dividend as the product of the divisor and quotient plus the remainder. I have x to the fourth. Its coefficient is a 1, so I wrote a 1 here. Negative 3x cubed, I write a negative 3. So you're just writing the numbers in front. 6x squared, that becomes our 6. Negative 12x. I take the negative 12, and then I have 8. In synthetic division, you're taking the factor. You know it's a factor because it has parentheses. And to get a 0, we set it equal to. What do we set it equal to? We set it equal to 0. So to solve this, I add 1 to both sides. These will cancel to equal 0, so x equals 1. To do synthetic division, you're going to bring it down. There's your 1. Then you're going to multiply. And then you're going to add or subtract. 
add. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Multiply. You have negative 2 here. 6 minus 2 gives you a 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. And 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. 8 plus negative 8, or 8 minus 8 is 0. Remember, this here represents your remainder. Remainder. And then as you go from right to left, what direction, class? These are now your constants of your answer or the quotient. So, remainder. A lot of you guys struggled writing this, so do it with me. This is your constant, meaning you don't add an x, you just leave it as the number. And you start adding the x, x squared, x cubed. Then it says write the dividend. Remember the dividend. That's what's on the inside of your long division. So if I had long division, something like this, the dividend is this one. Write it as a product equals the product, means multiplication. You should be using parentheses. The student who didn't use the parentheses and just put a dot there, use parentheses. Product of the divisor. So the divisor I'm going to put in pink. That's x minus 1. Normally that's out here, right? So there's my x minus 1. Essentially, this is your divisor. But remember, you have to transform it. And the quotient, so the quotient is what's normally on the inside. Or, I'm sorry, the quotient is our answer. So here's our answer that we've transformed. Let's write that quotient. This one is our divisor. Quotient green plus the remainder. Now, our remainder is 0, so I don't have to write plus 0 there. How did I score this problem? Um, a really rare case, if you're doing something correct, like if you knew how to just drop this down, I gave you 2 out of 4 points, even if the rest of it was wrong. Um, you probably got 3 out of 4, maybe your remainder is slightly off. Maybe you didn't know how to write um, the product. Uh, very rarely, but if you did long division here and you got it all correct, I gave you three points. Um, I took off a point for not using synthetic division. When you take your test next time, I'm going to give you a zero. It's kind of like um, it says fill out this application in pencil and you use pen. It's like show up with a check for $20. Like, you brought cash? Like, what are you doing? So pay attention to the directions. Question number six. Use each quotient using polynomial long division. Write the dividend as the product of the divisor and the quotient plus the remainder. So same thing we did above. x goes into 2x cubed. 2x cubed is 2 times x times x times x. There's the leading one x. Cancel my x's. You're left with 2x squared. Multiply. Okay, a lot of you guys struggle with that subtraction here. Use your calculator. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 1 minus negative 4. So let's just say, like, you don't know how to get that, right? Negative. Did you guys notice what button I pressed? Remember, these are the math operations, and this is the negative button. So, negative 1 minus, subtracting, negative 4. The answer is 3. Bring down the negative 13x. <coughs> x goes into 3x squared. Your answer is 3x. Multiply 3x times x gives me 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. You're subtracting. 3 minus 3 is 0. Negative 13 minus negative 6. That becomes a plus sign. So negative 13 plus 6 is a negative 7x. Bring it down. 
x goes into negative uh, 7 x, negative 7 times, multiply. Okay, I would probably say about 70% of students got this part wrong right here. So if you got it right, good job for you. Negative 6 minus positive 14, which reads negative 6 minus 14 is negative 20. How do you write this as a product? <coughs> Again, you're taking your dividend, what's in the inside. <coughs> There's a product of the divisor. That's on the outside. And the quotient, which is our answer, plus the remainder. Okay. Some of you guys struggled on this part. The remainder in this problem is negative 20. So it goes right there next to the quotient. I ran out of space. Um, so it should read 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. And this is negative. And then 20 over the um, divisor. And that would be your full credit problem. If you got something correct, like you got a 2x squared here, I put a check above it and gave you at least partial credit. Usually the common mistake was down here. A lot of you guys just missed your, um, and then, or the product. <coughs> Last question. Use synthetic division. Make sure to explain. What do you need to explain? Is x minus 3 a factor of x cubed plus 12 x squared plus 17 x minus 30? I'm putting all the coefficients inside for my synthetic division. Some of you guys weren't able to copy the problem correctly. Positive, 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 negative. Remember, the number, and the next common mistake I saw students write is they wrote x minus 3 over here. You need to set it equal to 0 and get just a number over here. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add. Multiply, add. A lot of you guys struggle getting this number. Use a calculator. No shame. How do you get the fourth point? There is a remainder, so no, it's not a factor because there's a remainder. That's why I was at 12. And that quiz was out of 26.